good research paper has both qualities of good studies and good writing. In addition, a research paper must be clear, short, and effective when presenting the information in an organized structure with a logical manner. The results section is a section containing a description about the main findings of the research, whereas the discussion section interprets the results for readers and provides the significance of the finding. This section should not repeat the results section. Some of the common reasons the results and discussion sections might cause reviewers to reject a manuscript. These are the confusing tables or figures, inconsistent or inaccurate data, potential variables that are not reported, over or under interpretation of the results. To avoid these problems, you can use an organized structure such as outlines, points, or subheadings to write the results and discussion section. For the results, figures and tables must be clear so the readers understand the message. In the discussion section, outline your thoughts to defend your research and to emphasize the significance of your research. Use good writing, clear argumentations, and logical explanations in this section to support your conclusion. Since your results follow your method section, you'll provide information about what you found from the methods you use, such as your research data. You may also include information about the measurement of your data, variables, treatments, and statistical analysis. To start, organize your research data based on how important those are in relation to your research questions. This section should focus on showing important results that support or reject your research hypothesis. Include your list important data as supplemental materials when submitting to the journal. The next step is to prioritize your research data based on importance, focusing heavily on the info information that directly relates to your research questions using the subheadings. The organization of the subheadings for the results section usually mirrors the method section. It should follow a logical and chronological order. Subheadings within your results sections are primarily going to detail major findings within each important experiment. And the first paragraph of your results section should be dedicated to your major findings. Findings that answer your overall research question and lead to your conclusion. Each subheading may contain a combination such as text to explain about the research data, figures to display the research data and to show trends or relationships, for example using graphs or pictures tables to represent a large data and exact volume. Describe on the best way to present your data in the form of text, figures, or tables. Sometimes we get confused about how to differentiate between data and results. Data are information that you collected from your research. So this is information or numbers obtained from research experiments, whereas results are the text presenting the meaning of your research data. This is a statement explaining the meaning of research data in the form of text. Other mistake that some authors often make is to use to direct the reader to find a specific table or figures without further explanation. This can confuse the readers when they interpret the meaning of the data completely different from what the authors had in mind. So you should briefly explain your results to make your information clear for the readers. Figures and tables present information about your research data visually. The use of this visual illustration is necessary so the readers can summarize, compare, and interpret large data at a glance. You can use graphs or figures to compare groups or patterns. For us, tables are ideal to present large quantities of data and exact values. Several elements are needed to create your figures and tables. These elements are important to sort your data based on groups or treatments. It will be easier for the readers to see the similarities and differences among the groups. 
When presenting your research data in the form of figures and tables, organize your data based on the steps of the research leading you into a conclusion. Common elements of the figures. So as you can see in the table, we have the figure number, figure title, figure legend, for example, a brief title, experimental or statistical information, or the definition of symbols. We have the data and the labels. Tables in the results section. So as you can see in the table, we have the table number, table title, Row headings, for example, groups. Column headings, data. Row subheadings, for example, categories or groups. Column subheadings, for example, categories or variables. And footnotes, for example, statistical analysis. Tips to write the results section. Direct the reader to the research data and explain the meaning of the data. Avoid using a repetitive sentence structure to explain a new set of data. Write a highlight your, and highlight your important findings in your results. Use the same order as the subheadings of the method section. Match the results with the research questions from the introduction. Your results should answer your research questions. Make sure there is no mismatch of the table number of the, or the figure number in that and in figures or tables. Only present data that support the significance of your study. You can provide additional data in tables and figures as supplementary material. How to organize the discussion section. It's not enough to use figures and tables in your results section to convince your readers about the importance of your findings. You need to support your results section by providing more explanation in the discussion section about what you found. The discussion section probably the most creative section of your paper in terms of telling a story about the research. In this section, based on your findings, you defend the answer to your research questions and create arguments to support the conclusions. This is the list of questions to guide you when organizing the structure of your discussion section. What experiments did you conduct and what were the results? What do the results mean? What were the important results from your study? How did the results answer your research questions? Did your results support your hypothesis or reject the hypothesis? What are the variables or factors that might affect your results? What are the strengths and limitations of your study? What are other published works support your findings? What other published works contradict your findings? What possible Factors might cause your findings different from other findings. What is the significance of your research? And last, what are new research questions to explore based on your findings? The structure of the discussion section may be different from one paper to another, but it commonly has a beginning, middle, and end to the section. Present the contents of your section from a narrow context to broader context. One way to organize the structure of the discussion section is by dividing it into three parts. The beginning part, the first sentence of the first paragraph should state the importance in the new findings of your research. The first paragraph may also include answers to your research questions mentioned in your introduction section, the middle part. The middle should contain the interpreta interpretations of the result to defend your answers, the strength of the study, the limitations of the study, and an updated literature review that validates your finding, the end part. The end concludes the study and the significance of your research. Another possible way to organize the discussion section is by using the structure. Discussion of important findings, comparison of your results with other published works, strength and limitations of the study, conclusions and possible implications of your study, including the significance of your study and future research questions based on your understanding. Finally, a last option is structuring your discussion this way. First paragraph. 
Provide an interpretation based on your key findings, then support your interpretation with evidence. The middle paragraphs. The middle paragraph should include the following, the secondary results, the limitations, the unexpected findings, comparison to previous publications. Last paragraph. The last paragraph should provide a summarization or the conclusion along with detailing the significance, implications, and potential next steps. Remember at the heart of the discussion, section is presenting an interpretation of your major findings. These are the tips to write the discussion section. Highlight the significance of your findings. Mention how the study will fill the gap of knowledge. Indicate the impl implication of your research and avoid generalizing, misinterpreting, drawing a conclusion with no supported findings from your results. Thank you very much for watching. Let us all enjoy learning.